Hello everyone, it's Freddie Mac, your Ham Radio Crusader, back with video one of the All-Star Series, series, series. Oh, well. <laughs> We're going to learn uh, along the way. I will learn a few things I'm new, I'm sure. But I'm going to try and convey to you what I've learned so far about building my own All-Star node. And no better place to start than at the very beginning. So... The, you know, we covered before in the other video that uh, things that you would want for your home all-star node, if you're going to build an RF node with a mobile radio, we're going to do it with the TYT TH9000D mobile radio. I haven't done the mod yet. We're going to do this all together and start one step at a time. But, you know, I got to thinking there's a lot of folks out there that are hams that aren't as computer savvy as some of the rest of us are. And, you know, I've explained a few of those terms in some of those videos you may not understand or may not know exactly sure how to do it. So we're going to cover that. So. Before we do anything else, we've got to have an, uh, a ham VoIP image of All-Star. We're doing the ham VoIP image because I've never done the ASL image. The ASL is the All-Star link version, ASL, uh, of the software that I, I'm just not that familiar with. They're very similar in nature, but there are differences. And I'm just more familiar with the ham VoIP version because I love the functionality and the extras that you can put onto it. Now, I don't know that you can put all these onto the ASL version or not. You might be able to. I just, I just don't know that yet. Hence my journey back to ham radio. Anyway, let's go up here. This is hamvoip.org. This is a website I believe is, I don't know if it was created by, but it is maintained by Doug Crompton, WA3DSP, and others. I'm sure. I'm not exactly sure. I just know uh, if I got a question about this, you hit the, uh, the, uh, discussion groups that he participates in and you're going to get some kind of detailed answer buddy let me tell you what he knows what he's doing nonetheless let's first let's go to the download section here to download a asl i'm sorry a ham voip all-star link image and i come down to right here no, let's see oh here we go for the raspberry pi two three and four this is the latest ASL version you want, All-Star Link Hamvoip version you want. Version 1.7.01, self-extract file for Windows, and I don't want it for Windows. I want the image version because I'm going to put it right into an S a micro SD card. The BBB image you don't want to do unless you still have a BeagleBone card. I don't think they're even in production anymore, so I just wouldn't waste my time if you've got a raspberry pi two three or four we're going to use a four for ours and we're going to download that image into our downloads folder this will take a minute okay now you can see we've stopped downloading or actually the uh, download has completed and we can go right to the folder and see where it's at yeah, it's about 309 megabytes in size. So, what we can do next is open up Belina Etcher or any other disk imaging software you like to use. I like to use Belina Etcher because it's it's uh, simplistic, not a lot of fluff, and it works for me. So if you want to flash from file, you want to navigate to your downloads folder to where your image is that you just downloaded. And you can pull that image up and go to generic SB device. If you want to change it, you can, but this is the generic storage device that you at mini USB <laughs> micro SD card. It's a 32 gig size image. It's uh, I wouldn't go any larger than that and just choose it, hit select once, and flash it. This will take just a few minutes, and once it's done, we're gonna eject it from the Windows machine and put it into the Raspberry Pi. So let's wait till it gets finished.
And we're back. Now that we've got the image written to the SD card, I've placed it into the Raspberry Pi. And I'm now going to plug it into the network by Hardwire and power it on. Let's let it boot up. Now that we've got the Raspberry Pi, the image on the SD card, and we've got the SD card in the Raspberry Pi, now we have the Raspberry Pi powered up on our local network. We've got to find it on that local network because that initial default setting on the uh, All-Star image is set for the network to capture DHCP instead of a static IP address. So it's just going to grab an IP address that your home router throws at it for those dynamic devices. But we want to make it static, but we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Okay. Let's go up to a little program I like to call advanced IP scanner. You can also use angry IP scanner. It's whatever you want to use. Uh, advanced IP scanner just seems to work better for me. So let's bring it up here. And initially it'll grab your home network's IP address configuration and try to hit the entire range. So just tell it to scan and let's start running through all the devices that are on your home network and see what's going on there. As you can see, things are going to start populating here. I have a, a Pi Star or two on this network. That's my uh, multi-mode digital voice modem. And that's for uh, like DMR, YSF, D Star. But this one will be a little bit different. We should see something along the lines of it ad identifying itself on the network as Alarm Pi. I don't know what that comes from, but that's the default. So let's start looking around here on our network and whoop, looky right there. Now, as I said, Alarm Pi is how it's designating itself on the network. And it looks like we're gonna be looking for 192.168.1.106. So how do we get to that? Well, if we just type it into a browser, It's just going to tell us this. This is a test. If you see this, the web server is working, which All Star Hamvoit version has an internal web server running. And you'll see why much, much later. But it's important to know that we're seeing this because we know it's on the network correctly. So now here's where it comes into SSH. Now, SSH means a couple of things. SSH, or Secure Shell, is a network communication protocol that enables two computers to communicate. Which is the protocol used to transfer hypertext such as web pages and share data. So it's just a method of communication. But I like to use a little program called PuTTY. And PuTTY is a free and open source terminal emulator, serial console, and network file transfer application. It supports several network protocols, including SCP, SSH, Telnet, R login, and raw socket communication. I'm sorry, raw socket connection. It can also connect to a serial port. The name PuTTY has no official meaning. Just what they named the program. But you can also use a program if you're on a Windows machine called WinSCP. I can type it right. And it does SSH as well, but with it, you can also edit files uh, that are inside of All Star at will. I mean, we'll get into that when the time comes, but for right now, we're going to focus on SSH because we've got to use SSH to get to that first All Star menu. So when you open SSH, you're going to get this 192.168.1.106, port 222. Hit open. 
and you will see a window that looks like this pop up because it needs to accept the server's uh, SSH key. And just hit accept and then you will have a window pop open that looks like this. Now the default login name is root and the default password is root. Now this is the first screen that you will get after you've done that successful login. Retrieve the latest system updates? Question mark. Do you want to do this now? Of course you do. Why wouldn't you? It's always good to have the latest updates, so hit yes. Let it do its download thing. So it's updating. Please do not reboot. The system has been updated and will now re reboot to apply the changes. So we just hit OK. And we lose our SSH session because the Raspberry Pi is now rebooting. So we'll give it a second to do that. So we'll put that IP address back in here. Port 222. And you know I like to come over here to Appearance and make that text just a little bit bigger because I'm old and I like to see things better than I actually can. The session, hit open, and oh look, that little window is just a little bit bigger now. Root and root, hit enter. Now it's gonna ask us once again, hey, do you wanna retrieve the latest system updates? Well, no, we don't because we just did. So we're gonna go over to no, hit enter, and says, would you like to run your first setup now? Uh, actually we do we do want to do that so let's hit yes and let's enter a new root password and that password will be at the first login request we get after we've logged in to the IP address of the Pi from SSH or from PuTTY or from WinSCP or FileZilla whatever we end up using so I'll put in a new password and for the sakes of this video we will call it Capital P A S S W O R D 2023. Hit OK. And then you got to enter it again so you can make sure you got it right. Don't use an exclamation point here. I have found out the hard way when you put an exclamation point or some other special characters in this root login password section you'll never get back in again <laughs> it's just the way the software is built so try not to use any special characters here uh, you may be able to use some I just found it easier not to use uppercase and lowercase letters and throw some numbers in there okay now this is an area we want to pause at because we want to go back and make sure you've got everything you need from all star you need to go to allstarlink.org. 